All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday to y'all. We have made it to the end of the week. Thank God. Thank God. No, no injuries, no nothing. We've been safe this first week. Uh, well, anyway, I hope you guys have had a restful night on last night and that you guys are uh, trying to enjoy this cold weather. Uh, it's definitely a season of hibernating. They call it cupping season, but uh, for us, uh, for us that are a little single, you know, it may be a season of hibernation and uh, I'm enjoying this time. Uh, well, we are getting ready to, uh, uh, I think we're closing out uh, this particular one. Um, I think I want to make an announcement. Uh, God keeps placing this on my heart and I'm trying so hard uh, to be obedient, y'all. I'm, I'm trying not to question God with things, if that's what you're really saying, because sometimes my flesh get in the way. Uh, but I believe that I'm going to uh, continue on uh, with this study on Saturdays and Sunday mornings. Uh, we're going to continue to keep flowing through. It's just something I think that God is after. Uh, he's been speaking to me about a uh, time of consecration, and I definitely want to uh, stay in the vein with God to hear from him uh, so that we can get ourselves in a safe place for this particular year. If y'all noticed, last year was a horrific year for a lot of people. And, um, you know, it looked like things just kept spiraling out of control. You know, we're we're hearing about deaths here and deaths there. Uh, I believe in the power of the blood. I really do. I believe that as we put that blood on our doorposts, uh, that the enemy just can't come in and wreak havoc over our lives, you know, like he, you know, would uh, for those that may not, you know, believe in so much of the power of God. Um, so I am going to go ahead and continue. You all are welcome to join in with me. I'm going to do it Saturday and Sunday, same time, uh, just to keep myself in that mode of getting up early in the morning. I'll probably do this through the remainder of January uh, so that I can kind of get some clarity on some things that God is speaking as well. And we're going to continue to keep studying our book, uh, God Will Make a Way. Uh, once again, for those of you that are just joining in, uh, I am going to continue on with Breakfast of Champions and uh, covenant keepers of uh, seven days a week throughout the month of January. This is going to be a part of the consecration time. And I think the last two weeks of the month, we're going to go ahead and go into fasting and prayer. Hopefully I can hear a lot more clearly from God on some of the things that he is speaking to me. And then that I can give directions for this ministry as well. And I hope that you guys will join in with us. Uh, just so happen if you're up in the morning and you want to come in and, you know, just uh, get a early, morning, a early morning word of inspiration, both Saturday and Sunday, uh, feel free to join on in. Don't feel pressured or anything like that. But just in case, if you are up early in the morning and you want just a taste of inspiration, come on in to Breakfast of Champions and Covenant Keepers. Uh, throughout the month of January for the seven, we're going to be in seven days. I don't know what God is saying. I don't know what God is doing. I'm just going to follow his leading with that. So I invite you guys to join in with me as well. Y'all feel free to share the link. I actually posted something in the chat box uh, to help you guys. Um, all you got to do is copy and paste. Uh, send that out to maybe five people that you know, five to seven people that you know. And I invite them in. You just never know. People may be up, um, you know, wandering in their mind about different things. And I believe that, you know, when you come into a community of believers, anything can happen. It even causes my messages to shift a lot of time, depending on what the people are needing. So uh, put me to work, you know, uh, put me to work and put our leaders to work. Give us something to do. And uh, y'all press that bar with us. Uh, well, we are going to continue on with the study. Well, let me go back. Did y'all enjoy the message on yesterday? Um, got a call from a couple of people saying that they really enjoyed it. Uh, sometimes I will stop for moments of testimony uh, because I believe it's necessary uh, that you guys hear what's going on within the ministry, what's going on in my life. And uh, we love to hear the testimony of those of you that are in the room as well to let you know that it's working. Uh, sometimes things look like they, yeah, look like things are, are moving a little slow sometimes, but I'm telling you, you'll win if you don't quit, you know, don't quit sewing, don't quit fasting, don't quit believing, don't quit coming in. I saw y'all coming in early this morning. I said, look at them, God, they got that message yesterday. <laughs> so I appreciate y'all doing that. Keep doing it. You know, don't, 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 don't quit pressing the gas. Stay on that thing especially if you believe in God for something. Um, 
But anyway, uh, we do share those testimonies sometime. Uh, this morning, I think we're going to go to uh, page 62, where it talks about sometimes it takes a shock. Yeah, sometimes it's, it takes a shock for us to own our faults and our weaknesses. And uh, we definitely want to talk about that. Maybe God will stir up some testimonies in our lives uh, that will help us to kind of um, recognize, oh, that's what that was. Oh, that's what God is doing. Because, y'all, God is in real time. Uh, we're up this morning. He's right here in the midst of this class. Whether you feel him, uh, sense him or uh, whatever, but he is a present help whenever you need him. And he is literally in real time. So don't sleep on him this morning. Get up, wake up, you know, give him something to do. And these messages are really uh, pertaining to the things that are going on in our real time world. Um, you know, but you got to be seeking after God to find the answers that you want. Um, I know, I know I do. And I'm going to continue to keep uh, petitioning God for what I need. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and go in for a word of prayer. And then we're going to um, go in. Let's do takeaways first. I want to uh, give time for takeaways and then we'll jump into uh, the remainder of this chapter here. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, Father, first want to say thank you so much. Um, I want to thank you for a good night's rest last night. Or well, sometimes I wake up and I realize, gosh, the time has flown by, which means I slept well. So, Father, I want to thank you for that. I thank you so much for your promises, God, that are yea and amen. Uh, Father, you said we have not because we ask not. You know, and sometimes we feel that he already knows, but I think that's a part of the communication piece with you, that you want to talk to your children and you want your children to talk back to you. It helps us to practice even when it comes down to, to uh, speaking to our loved ones, that we not be afraid to go to one another, you know, even with the smallest of conversation pieces, you know, it shows an interest um, in the life of our father, you know, and then it also shows an interest in the people that we do life with. I pray, Lord God, that you would help us to stop being so afraid of embarking upon territories that maybe we have you know, been there before and maybe we got rejected or maybe we feel like we didn't get an answer in a place. Help us to keep on knocking. You said the knock seeking you will find, you know, just because you didn't get the answer one day doesn't mean you don't go back the next day. You know, sometimes God, I pray that you would, um, uh, sometimes I believe that we are um, uh, getting introduced to pain called rejection. And sometimes when we feel rejected, we won't do it again. Or we're also getting uh, introduced to, um, you know, you know, some of the uh, kind of the lethargic moods that we have. I just don't feel like it. We're going by our feeling. But help us to know that we walk by faith and not by sight. Because everything is subject to change. Just because I feel one way today doesn't mean I'm going to feel that way in 10 minutes later. So we press in, even on this morning, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you would continue to, um, you know, uh, commune with us, sit with us, especially when we're going through our most difficult challenges, you know, because life has a tendency to present some alternatives to us sometimes. And uh, Father, we don't want to be drawn by the alternative. We want to be drawn by the voice of God. So teach us how to hear your voice, Lord God. Now, teach us how to walk in obedience to your word. Stir up the gifts that are down inside of us. Help us in this season to walk in a season of consecration and also discernment. There's nothing, Lord God, that's going on around us that you have not tried to touch us first with. So, Father, we ask your blessings upon this message this morning. And uh, even as we, um, you know, move forward in the conversation throughout this weekend, Father, I pray that you will bring things back to our remembrance. Help us to know you're the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. So, Father, we send your blessings out. We continue to keep lifting up our sister, Miss Cookie uh, Williams. Uh, Father, we ask you to continue to keep your hand of protection upon her daughter, Lord God. We lift up Mrs. Delcina, continue to keep protecting her heart. Bless her. We, we continue to keep lifting up all of those that may be sick in this particular season, Lord God. Strengthen them. 
We lift up our marriages right now in the name of Jesus. Keep them bonded in unity together. We look forward, we, we even lift up our future marriages, Lord God. Help us to stay focused, Lord God, because we'll win if we don't quit. So, Father, we just bless you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, we're going to go. You want to welcome everybody in this morning. Um, those of you that are newbies to the room, uh, thank you for joining us with Covenant Keepers and Breakfast of Champions. We are here uh, for the month of January only, uh, seven days a week. We're going to be here Saturday and Sunday uh, in the morning. The lines open up at six o'clock. Uh, I don't know if Nini will be in with music or not, but the lines will be open at six o'clock for you guys to join in with us. Uh, we're taking a little bit of time of consecration and also to sharpen our discernment in this season. So we welcome you guys to come in and join us. Afterwards, we will be back on our five days a week. So I got think. <laughs> so just come on in and join us. Uh, we are on a study, uh, God Will Make a Way, uh, by uh, authors Dr. Um, um, Henry McLeod and Dr. John Townsend. And it's a study that talks about what to do when you don't know what to do. And I think we've all been there at some times. Uh, we've been reading about a story about um, uh, uh, Sharon and Rob uh, who are going through some things in their marriage. And, you know, the tables are turning in so many different ways. Uh, seemed like Rob is not interested in the relationship anymore. Uh, Sharon has kind of been jilted by, John, by uh, Rob walking away, leaving a note saying that he's gone, he checked out. And so now she's left with the remnant of trying to figure out what to do with her life. Uh, so page 62, it talks about sometimes it takes a shock. It says sometimes we need a shock to wake up to the truth. Sharon had refused for months to consider that her constant blaming was the root of their marriage problems. She could not see that her behavior uh, hurt Rob uh, so, mu so much that it made him doubt that he was loved by God or anyone. Uh, and it depleted his heart, uh, his heart and of life, love and energy to work things out. Um, I want to kind of stop right there a little bit. Um, you have to watch the temperature of your home, conversations that you have, conversation that you have on your phone with other people, uh, because there's an there's an energy that kind of protrudes out, and you know. Um, the Bible says out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. And a lot of times you can be on the phone or communing with other people and that stuff will um, uh, project on other people that come into your life. You know, the way you respond to them, they say, hey, what? You know, uh, and a lot of times you're not even talking to them. You haven't finished the conversation prior, you know, and that file, that's what I call Say you need to close files in your mind. And you can have a file that's open and it's causing a person to kind of feel a little rejected or whatever. And especially in marriages, when the two have been bonded together uh, by a union uh, that comes from God, because remember, marriage is a God idea. That's not a man idea. And when we're walking in covenant, remember, he said two shall become one. And when one is going through some things, it causes the other one to feel the effect of what that other person is going through. And so a lot of times we feel like, well, that's not my issue. That's their issue. Uh, to be honest, it's all of our issues. You know, everybody that's in the house, even if you have in-laws that move in with you, the energy of the entire house is combined together, you know, so you definitely have to pay attention to the things that are going on there. And it's saying that her constant blame and sometimes the conversation, you know how it is. Sometimes you can have conversation with other people and they're telling you, constantly telling you about their marriage and, you know, what they're doing. And a lot of times when yours is not going that way, uh, you can create mental pictures in your mind of uh, regret or, or, you know, you could be playing a mental picture in your mind to say, you know, I knew I shouldn't have married them or, you know, did I really do the right thing? You start questioning yourself. And before long, you will begin to start projecting that out on other people. And, and sometimes it can go out to your spouse. And then all of a sudden, you'll see that person start withdrawing from you or they stop coming home or, you know, they stop uh, engaging like they used to, don't go to the company parties anymore or, 
Maybe they decide, you know, they're going to drive another car when they go to church or, you know, you start doing all kinds of things that separate you. That is because there's a leakage taking place somewhere, you know, and it's not it's not for you to take the blame for the uh, what the other person is doing. But it is an indicator that you need to uh, um, make notice that I noticed that, you know, John decided he was going to drive his car to church when we used to go to church together. You know, I think I think we without nagging, I think we have to go to God about ways to commune about that, even with your children or those that are not married, maybe, you know, dealing with some issues with your children. The first time you notice that, you know, the children try to tell you, well, I don't want to go, you know, there and, and y'all are used to going. It's probably because there's a voice of division uh, somewhere that's taking place. I hear uh, stories of uh, uh, families of mothers and fathers. Uh, to where they have uh, definitely married unequally yoked up, not even really knowing what that meant before. And they marry someone uh, where they are devout Christians and they end up marrying someone that's not a devout Christian and the house is divided because when one stays home, uh, they're going to be convinced that you don't have to take the other ones to church either. You know, if they want to stay home today, they're fine. You know, you you have to come together on one accord. So there needs to be conversations prior to making commitments to one another about, you know, what's important to us. And I think that even in life, um, a life takes junctures, they take turns. And, you know, like say, for instance, both you came in and you all were uh, um, uh, not living a life for Christ. And then one gave their life to Christ. And the other one is is still like in the life that we lived before, sometimes that can leave a leave a, a taste of rejection because now you want to go to church all the time and you don't want to come spend time with us. Oh, you want to go to all the functions that everybody have and you don't want to spend time with us. I think that's times to where we need to communicate a lot better and recognize that there has been a shift and there's been a change that's taken place. And it, it helps us to uh, keep the cohesiency of the relationship together because it says that I care. Even though I made a decision for my life and something shifted in my life, I care about the party of people that are there with me. So, you know, even though I'm in my head trying to figure this thing out too, can you imagine what the other person is feeling over there when something shifted in the household? I think it takes open communication uh, to kind of talk about these things. So let's kind of talk about that first. I'm going to do the take. I said I was going to do the takeaways, but let's talk about our takeaways from yesterday. And then also, have you ever found yourself distant from the people in your household? You know, and then later on, you start realizing that um, uh, something got in the home and I don't know where it came from. And it could have come from us not joining together or understanding um, maybe uh, the tempo of the household, and now the house is out of order and in a disarray. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Anybody have anything they'd like to share on that this morning? We call it sometimes it takes a shot. Even if you want to do a takeaway from yesterday that kind of leads up to this conversation, you're more than welcome. I'd love to hear from you guys this morning. Have any of y'all ever felt a shift in your home before? You wondered where it came from? Come on, ladies. <laughs> you know, um, when I talked to couples today, you know, I, I talked to one yesterday, and in particular, this, this shift that happened at home when this guy married into a family that had, lady had three kids, he marries into the family. He has two kids he's not in contact with. However, his role as being this leader, husband, now a father in the home for kids that are not his, and his inability to maintain steady employment, you know, has been these um, structural changes inside the home that has torn them somewhat apart because she's working double time. And he is at home taking care of the kids, of course, but his his lacking has caused a separation in the home. They're in the same house that they don't communicate. And that was his his place. We don't communicate about this, that, and other, and I can't get this from you. And so I look at four of other people, but his communication is so off. 
and I can recognize, and I had to call him out on it, and he really didn't see that he was still living in these past relationships, these mm -hmm. soul ties, of what he was not able to be with those first two wives, and that's distance that he has from his own kids, but now he's trying to be a father to these kids that are not even his, and one is very defiant toward him, so he blames his wife. <laughs> You know, so this this house is so disarrayed, you know, and how they function. And if, if they don't, if he don't find a way to heal, because he never has, the relationship is is most definitely going to doom because he's always blaming, blaming, blaming. It's never his responsibility. And I think sometimes we have to make sure we look at ourselves, help ourselves, heal ourselves, heal within ourselves so we can be a help or a healing for others that they may gravitate toward because I can't help make them, I give them the, I can't make them heal per se. However, if I'm healing, they can at least see that I'm doing some work within myself that hopefully would prompt them to heal. You know? Amen. Amen. That's good, Marcus. And that is a good example of uh, sometimes when you have not, I call it shut files, uh, from the past or what are even working on those. So sometimes we don't always get them completely uh, shut right away. So sometimes it takes other people coming into your life to help you to bring recognition to a thing. Um, it can actually spill over into relationships and it brings in distrust. It brings in accusations uh, because a lot of times those accusations are not real. We're just still playing a movie from yesterday. And really it involves a conversation to sit down and talk about, you know, what this will look, look like. You know, that that's where we come to uh, uh, developing visions for your marriage, uh, for your relationships. Um, I think you do need to paint a picture before people about what it is that you desire, you know, so that even if we end up having to get into counseling, we won't be into counseling because we didn't have a vision for where we're going. Because a lot, a lot of times what ends up happening, you know, we come in and we expect for the therapist, the counselor, the life, the life coach to fix a problem that we have not even laid a foundation for. And so the problem comes in, I just want to answer, I just want to fix it. And then they're saying that you need to get your foundation together. So sometimes that can be the shocker and it can be the problem too, because I don't have a place of reference of what a foundation looks like, you know, and that's what pushes us more into having to build a spiritual foundation with God and ourselves, find out what you want, you know, what you like, what you're bringing to the table, you know, um, wh what does that look like not having your children in your life and having our children in your life, you know, are you feeling a little guilty? Um, uh, do you feel a little resentment? And now that you see other kids, maybe you wanted to raise your kids a certain way, and now you're thinking that my kids are supposed to be raised that way. You know, those, those say you can't wait till you get into a relationship and start talking about that stuff. Well, it's not it's not as um, as helpful. Uh, to wait then, but sometimes we don't know that we need to talk about that, but as quickly as you can see it, I think there needs to be a conversation that happens, and it's all going to lead back to the individual, you know, because a lot of times we do try to push the blame off on other people. It Well, it wasn't for them. It's always somebody else when there's a, really an inward fight that's going on that needs to be worked on, so great one. Uh, anybody else this morning? Anybody else? Have y'all ever left doors open and you now you're trying to figure out what happened? <laughs> What's wrong? What happened? I, I'll talk about me. Um, and this one, y'all know that I've been talking about in my first quarter uh, is um, uh, reconstructing the family, kind of getting everybody back on one accord. Uh, sometimes we make decisions about uh, certain things uh, and we may not always think about um, the implication or the uh, how this thing may affect uh, family later on. Um, I really believe that um, I've been uh, pulled away from uh, the family these last three years. Uh, we, we've, we've not um, bonded as much as we have in times past. And it's caused a little bit of a gap, you know, in there. And sometimes you don't even know how much of, of the glue that you are, you know, to your family. And sometimes when you leave little open doors, it allows, uh, you, you know how it is. We talk about how family 
uh, has been designed to design uh, to uh, put a hedge of protection around us. It's kind of like a protective shield. Uh, people have a place where they identify where family is at. A lot of times when the family has been kind of uh, discombobulated just a little bit, uh, people are trying to find a place of reference. And, uh, and I think this is uh, possibly what has happened uh, with mine, even with my children or whatever, these last three years, there's been a lot of stuff that has happened. And I think it has been because we have not uh, come together as we have always done. But the thing that I hold on to, I don't know about y'all, uh, the foundation has been laid. You know, this is where the this is where the Bible says the the um, the enemy what what he says uh, the weapon has formed, but it will not prosper, because the foundation has already been laid. But I have to go in and um, hear from God on how to pull the pieces back together again. You know, and believe it or not, God can come in and make it more beautiful than what it was before. But you have to stay focused on that recognize own your own weaknesses, your faults, whatever. Now, I do believe I needed a breather, you know, to kind of step away just a little bit to uh, kind of um, um, get my sense of, um, I don't know, direction for my own life, um, you know, outside of the children or whatever. But I also realized that we are one. And uh, when the Bible says that a house divided does not stand, and I just believe that even as you are making uh, the necessary shifts or the growths that's taking place in your life, you want to make that decision with your family in mind. Um, every now and then I'll go back and I'll think about, you know, what could have been done uh, just a little bit different. And uh, I do see some things. I think that uh, that me, uh, my son and daughter-in-law and the children should have stayed together just a little bit longer all because we had a plan of what we were trying to do. But there was a lot of, um, we had to make a lot of moves. Uh, a lot of um, uh, things took place to where uh, I moved with my sister, um, you know, so that we could have a place of privacy with one another. And then the children had to end up moving. Um, the, the home that we were leasing at that particular time, uh, the owner decided to uh, sell the house which causes division with my son and his wife. Um, she went back to Marshall for a little while and my son stayed here because his business was here, all of that. And they had never been separated from one another before. Uh, sometimes when you do that, you leave room for the enemy to come in. That's why I remember my boss telling me one time uh, when Emmett and I had separated and I had just met him and um, and he asked me, he said, Marilyn, um, where's your where's your husband at? And um, I didn't tell him the full truth of what was going on. He was incarcerated at that time. I didn't tell him all that. And then I told him, but we were separated. And he said, Marilyn, you need to make a decision about that quickly. Because now he's a Christian. He said, because that's not healthy for a relationship. He said, you leave too much room for the enemy to come in and do some things. He said, so you need to make a decision about that very quickly. And, uh, and I did, I, I respected his advice with it. And that's why I say it's good for you to have uh, people that are on your lifeline, some spiritual people that's on your lifeline uh, when you can't see, because sometimes we're blinded by things. I think this is what happened to Sharon too. She could have been taking care of the kids and, you know, thinking, oh, Rob is grown. He can take care of himself. But you got to remember, y'all came together to take care of one another, you know. So those were some things that took place. Sometimes we do leave too much room in between for the enemy to get a foothold into our relationships. But I say this, thanks be unto God. When you have a foundation, everybody don't have no foundation. But when you have a foundation, you do have a place of reference that if anything ever gets out of alignment, see, because it's, the, it's God that moved the pieces. Y'all hear me well. It's God that's moving the pieces of your life. And he's taking everything into an account, the mishaps, the struggles. Uh, sometimes when we get ourselves into situations to where, you know, we let our emotions take control. And sometimes those emotions will cause a uh, spiraling of events. But it's something about sometimes I, I believe in separation. I really do. 
Uh, even Moses talked about it. And there, there are times when we separate from one another and that's so that we can get ourselves together. That's not for us to go and get involved in the other stuff, but it's so that we can separate. So I do believe in that, but you have to learn how to come back quickly, communicate with one another. So even if it's your family, if it's your children, it's something on your job, the Bible says, agree with your adversary quickly. Okay. We got some disgruntlement going on. I get it. Most of the time, this is what you end up having that causes shocks to take place. One person is trying to get the attention of the other and you blow them off, you, especially when your mind is preoccupied with other things, you blow them off, you start you know, bringing in all kind of other stuff where you did this, we start that blaming game. And, and to be honest, y'all, people are going through trauma. And, and when you talk about even trauma, sometimes trauma can, and I want Marcus to kind of jump in with this, trauma sometimes can look like grief and loss because um, I can't find a place of reference for this storm that I'm going through. So you go through the stages of grief and loss, like anger, you start blaming, you know, eventually you come to a place of um, kind of a realization within your self-acceptance. You know, you that, that's what trauma does to us too. You have to go through those phases. Sometimes, like she said, it takes a shock. You got to wake up to the truth. That was traumatic. Separation is traumatic. Losing a child is traumatic. Going through a divorce is traumatic, you know, and you have to allow yourself the opportunity for Murphy's Law to come into your life. Sometimes we become so rigid to where um, we don't think anything can happen to us. You think it's, sometimes you think your things are so solid, especially, and, I, and I'm, I was really speaking to marriages. You think that your marriage is so solid that the enemy won't come in, but y'all walk around with each other, don't talk to each other. Y'all say things ugly to each other. Don't go back and apologize. You don't think you're leaving room for the enemy to come in? And Red Cab, he just waiting on the right opportunity. All he want is somebody to say, I'm sick of you and I'm tired. And you know what he said? Got a foothold in there. Let me make them say it again. See, because if they say it again, out of the abundance of your heart, your heart, your mouth will begin to start speaking. And eventually you will go along with the words that you have said. So Marcus, can you talk to us a little bit about how trauma uh, affects decisions that people make in life. And sometimes we have not always uh, looked at the realities of what's going on. We're, we're in this thing. It's self-preservation. I'm trying to survive and I'm not thinking about the other people that are around. And I think that's kind of how that relationship was. I talked about earlier. Every time I meet with someone, it remind me of me sometime in earlier years and how I treated my marriage. And I think I've been trying to heal from that for a long time. Then I get to a good place and then I don't realize I'm still living in past issues. When a person says that I'm done, I challenge that because that means they're not going to put forth any more effort. They're going to put more forth that, that ability to reconcile. When they say I'm done, emotionally they checked out. When that happens, you can, I guess, debate to try to pull it back together. But until something changes in the atmosphere, in that person's heart, this this relationship is on uh, is really at a uh, maybe a permanent standstill <laughs> yeah. until something breaks. And I think something happened yesterday in the session with this guy when I was calling him out on what he was doing because he didn't hear himself how he was uh, maybe just uh, dis dis uh, honoring his wife with words and how he was talking to her and and how she's really been his main supporter, but. He can't see because of his own pain, his own hurt, his own discouragement. So he's traumatized by things he think he has to fix when he just needs to live beyond. You can't fix some things that have transpired in your life, but you can live beyond in a different state of mind when you have turned it over, surrendered to God. Because that's what I brought up to him too, because him and his wife, they believers, but they're not 
they're not believers, if you will. Uh, and mm -hmm. they'll tell you that they, they believe in God, but you know what? I got hurt by church a long time ago. She did too. So we just don't, we don't do that. So how do you grow if you just, it's just you and God and your basic understanding of how to deal with trauma, life decision, family, um, melting pot situation where you married into something how do you how do you grow just with your hurt knowledge of who god is versus the healed knowledge of who god is mm -hmm. that's and that's good. significant in reference to any type of transitional change mm -hmm. what we call trauma sometimes and it is it's a transitional move the y'all uh, uh, i'm glad you said that marcus uh, that's one of the reasons that I started the program, uh, Living a Life of Freedom. Um, it was designed for people that were in transitional stages. You know, it doesn't matter what the transition is, whether you're transitioning on jobs, uh, in your marriage, um, um, uh, empty nesting, uh, maybe you've gone back to school. You know, you need an anchor or you need a, um, you, you, you need a place uh, to where you can lay your burdens and your concerns down uh, about uh, the tr transition that you're going through. Because a lot of times what we find ourselves doing is trying to walk through things by ourselves, but you're walking down a road that you've never, hopefully, maybe, never been down. And you got to learn how to turn the lights on and then also involve the right people in your life. So uh, it's about doing life with people uh, so that you not hit so many stumbling blocks in life, you know, and it helps you to kind of get your, your bearings back together much quicker uh, so that you not be in complete uh, therapy sessions, which we thank God for our therapist, but that stuff can become mental both to you and the therapist when we're trying to get an understanding, okay, the only person that you're leaning on is who? Well, I don't talk to nobody but mama. Well, mama don't have all experiences in life. You know, well, I don't have anybody but the people at my church that I talk to. OK, so is your issue with the people at the church or do you have an outlet, you know, for, well, I only go to Sunday morning service. OK, but is Sunday, is that the only thing that you need? That's for spiritual development as a whole. But what what's going on when you, you got some financial issues or when you guys are going through marital bliss, do you have anything like that, a lifeline that you can go to? And I think one of the things that God does to make a way for us is to open up the channels of understanding to find out what's lacking in your life and what it is that you need. So I want to co continue reading uh, with the story this morning. Um, it says that she could not see that her behavior hurt Rob so much that it made him doubt uh, that he was loved by God or anyone, and it depleted his heart of life, love, and energy to work things out. It says, certainly Rob should have done something other than abruptly leave. Remember, we talked about sometimes that some people's go-to is just to leave, but the shock of, of, of Rob's a goodbye note caused the first small breakthrough. You know, suddenly he wasn't there to blame for the way she was feeling anymore. And Sharon had no clue what to do, what to turn and what decision to make. Should she call Rob and try to talk him into returning? Should she get an attorney? What was supposed to happen? What, uh, what was she supposed to tell the kids? Okay. Fortunately, as I mentioned, Sharon loved God. They got a foundation, remember. So as people from ancient days until today have been doing, she did the one thing anyone should do when they are lost and cannot find her way. She reached out to God by praying and asking him for help. I think that's one of the lifelines. The first lifeline that we need is a place to where we can uh, stop and uh, commune with God. Uh, y'all know yesterday I was telling y'all about my granddaughter and, um, everything is a life lesson. Everything is a life lesson. So anyway, I was concerned. I don't want to fix it. I want to fix your problems or whatever. But when I tell you that baby, to think her way out of a box. Uh, she came up and I asked questions. Uh, she ended up coming up with the money that she needed to do what needed to be done. And I said, Lay, where'd you get the money from? You know how we are. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm gangster mode over here thinking like, don't be over here robbing people and all that kind of stuff. But you got to be bold and ass. And I said, like, where'd you get the money from? 
And uh, I, even me, I hadn't even thought about this. And she said, Granny, I got an advancement on my income tax. I said, shut your mouth, girl. Let me tell you what I, I immediately went to her next. I said, Lay, this is what I want to make a suggestion that you do. You are a smart girl and savvy when it comes to business. I have seen you operating in business since you were 16 years old. The first time I heard her operating, she was on the phone uh, talking to uh, one of the uh, agent on the line, and it was the way she handled that call. She handled that call so gracefully. She asked the right questions. She does not take no for an answer when it does not need to be. I said, Lord, that's going to work for her, but she's got to find, find balance with it. And I told her, I, I've, I've seen you operating in business and how you can think your way out of a box. And I said, why are you? Because she's back in Tyler. I said, why are you in Tyler? I, you know, I'm big on, you know, trying to get your education or getting your career together. And so I had to tell her a story about myself. And I said, Lay, I know y'all think that, you know, I've always been at the place of where I am right now, but I have not, not always been here late. I said, I struggled up until I turned 26 years old, you know, uh, because it was me and the three kids. I was trying to make a way. And I said, but the kids became my reason for why I would do what I did. Um, I said, Lay, I ended up uh, going and finding a job that was paying more than enough. You know, I knew that I had the favor of God. I knew that, you know, um, if I made a move that God would step in with me. And I said, I made a move, but I didn't let that be my last move because I didn't want to just stay right there. And I said, I always wanted to go to school for business. You know, that that's what I saw myself doing. I don't know where that came from, you know, whatever. I said, but I always saw myself doing. And I said, and later on, I literally dropped into positions to where I was working with executive leaders, different things like that. And I said, in hindsight, what I would tell you, because it seems like you've got some of those same traits within you. Uh, I don't know if it's because she's been sitting around us uh, as business owners within the family. And I don't know if she's just picking up on some things or whatever. And I said, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to say go back to school right now because maybe mentally you're not in that uh, place at this particular time. But what I will say for you to do is go over to the continued ed education um, program that TJC has. And I want you to get into some business classes. You know, I want you to get into office management. That's what I told her. I wanted you to go in and get a certification for office management. That just kind of whets her appetite for things. She may not know right now she needs to go back to school, but I want to whet your appetite for different things. That's because you're smart and you're a savvy young girl. I said, take you some Excel classes uh, let, and then ask the right questions Which, when you get in the room. And y'all, she immediately responded back. And she said, thank you. I'm going to look into that, you know, because I think she's crying out for a better way to live life. And sometimes you can have so many struggles around you. You can't think outside the box. And and I said, Lay, I'm going to do everything I can uh, to make sure that you become successful. That's my job here. I'm not going to do the work for y'all, but I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that you guys are successful. I don't just do it for the boys and don't do it for the girls. I'm going to do it for everybody that I can to make sure y'all are successful. They, all I need you to do is do the work. You know, if you put one foot forward, God will make a way for the rest. He knows you are a single parent. He knows that you need to make a, a, a living for your children. And I, I added this and I said, and I want to say this to you. Don't go out there doing illegal stuff. See, because one, I needed I needed the enemy to know that I peak game. And I can see little things that go on. Don't go out there doing nothing illegal. Don't do anything that's gonna taunt your name. Don't go don't, don't do anything that's gonna cause your daughter to be separated from you. Because when survival comes in, people will, we got testimonies our own self. Survival kicks in, you'll start doing some stuff. And a lot of times, family members, we sit around and we see the remnants of stuff. You God, he'll bring it to your mind about what happens when survival comes in. That, that's some little girls I keep seeing when I'm Uber and survive. That's all it is, survival. They don't have no plan for nothing that they're doing in life. So you sitting over there with little Johnny over there, and he put you in an Uber ride, and this joker won't even walk you to the car. That's called you don't have no vision for yourself. And I told her, I said, and don't get caught up with these guys out there late. 
And I said, cause that's just a, that's just, that's just a, a, a place of momentary satisfaction, but that ain't nothing. That's like Chinese food, baby. That ain't gonna last. You need to find something that's going to move in the direction for you and your daughter. And uh, sometimes you need to get the door just to plant a seed. And that's what I'm having to do for everybody to help pull these pieces back together. But I'm hoping that God will do something else on the other side of it. I want them to know you need God in your life. That's what Marcus was saying. How are y'all making it through this marriage and this relationship? And you guys don't have a found one. One may have a foundation but y'all are not leaning on God for the support that you need. You're trying to do things on your own out there. You got financial problems, but you won't lean on God for support to teach you how to get out of that financial rut. You got family issues that are going on, but you won't lean on God. You keep going to the same resources that you've gone to before. Einstein said that's insanity. Anytime you keep going and doing the same thing that you did last time, as if you think that something's going to change, that is insanity. You have to change your mind. And there sometimes has to be intervention that comes in. That's where we come in as the body of Christ to stop being afraid to speak up to people, especially when it comes down to family members about little things that's going on. But remember, let your words be seasoned. You know, meaning you got some experience. That's all seasoning means to me. You got some experiences that have caused that thing not to be so bland, that you not be so forceful with what it is. Well, all you got to do is this. No, everybody not in that. All you got to do is this. You got to season that thing with the right conversation. You got to ask God for conversation to create an atmosphere for us to have conversation and then you got to allow God to give you the right words. I think about Marcus and, and Marcus, if you could share on this as well, you know, um, even before you start your counseling sessions with the people that come in, uh, what are the methods of things that you do to prepare yourself, not for one particular um, uh, session, but for multiple sessions? even when it comes down to you learning from it, because I heard you say something is kind of awakening some things within you and then to apply uh, the knowledge that God has given to you uh, to make sure to give them the right antidote and to make sure to season those things properly so that it can be received because the Bible says it's the anointing that comes and destroys the yoke. So Marcus, can you share on that a little bit? Well, most definitely. Uh, when I get up in the morning, like even this morning, if I got on this call, I, I pray to God, you know, God, just give me the tools I need today and the words to say to clients when they come in. Not only help me, but help them, whatever they're processing. Because, again, um, life is life, you know, and one of the goals is that I want to continue to grow in life decisions that I make and how I interact with my kids and all these other things. So I do relate a lot of personal things without letting them know this, my story. And in sessions, which helps me to stay grounded in thinking about solutions versus thinking about what I'm going through, that helps me to, to most mm -hmm. definitely stay in tune with healing, releasing, surrendering. And it's just what God has given me a gift for, for one, to help uh, pour into others. But he's also teaching me, don't, don't forget to make sure you pour it into. Right. It's so important. But you have to stay vulnerable enough to let people know that you've had your journey, but you don't have to tell them your journey in order for them to really relate to the healing process. You know, so I don't go into every detail about what I've experienced, but I let people know that, you know what, life has dealt me hands I had to fold as well and had to restart as well. And that helps to connect, you know, with them in reference to how they could come out or can come out of whatever they're dealing with and dealing with teenagers. I have not raised a 15 year old yet. However, I do have a 14 year old in three months, she'll be 15. So I know that there's a different level of expectation for her. I don't know what it is if I haven't raised one. I've seen a lot, but I haven't raised one. So that's a different process. You know, when I get them in my house and I can tell that story about my kids and tell now I'm going through this, 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 um, this scenario of raising them and giving them tools that I've been talking about now I gotta utilize. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's that's totally different. <laughs> you know, it's a different process. And it's just like you were telling that 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 person that you were talking to, a family member, you know, 
you you have you have this visionary uh, passion to do certain things you can be accomplished how also you can be also caught off guard with how people may um persuade you when you don't even know you've been right. persuaded i told my teen i said when you go to the mall don't go in a shoplifting mm-hmm. I teach a shoplifting class. She got mad. She said, I don't shoplift. You don't. I said, I'm just telling you, you're around three other people yep. that could influence you. <laughs> so I'm just telling you, when you go, be mindful. Don't take nothing that don't belong to you. That's right. Okay? Because they may, even though they have money in their pocket, they may because it's funny, it's fun, and get away with it, whatever whatever the thing may be, but if you're not uh, consciously aware that it could happen to you, you're thinking it never will happen to you. And that's scary. That's good, Marcus. Yeah, because most most kids, they are living life. That's funny. That's fun. There, there was this uh, story, one of the Uber riders. This one I found out about people were still in Hyundais. One of my Uber riders um, uh, told me that uh, there were four teenagers. Uh, said that his wife had just come home. And um, she was just getting the groceries out of the car, her and her, her and the baby. He just so happened to have gotten off early and was coming home, only to come home and find the car light on the car open. He said, well, maybe my wife, you know, she hadn't been getting groceries out or whatever. And come to find out it was some teenagers that had uh, broken the car and they were trying to steal the Hyundai. Four teenagers. They had just got out of school. Four teenagers. They done come in, had two girls in it and two guys in it. <clears throat> they getting ready to do joy ride. They think they're going to joy ride and just leave the car somewhere. Probably ain't thought about putting no gloves on or nothing. Think about no fingerprints. They just, and especially if they up under the influence, they done drunk a little some, then smoked a little some, because they sure be smelling like skunk a whole lot in my car. And uh, and then come to find out, he found a, he ran, the, one of the boys ran into a no nonsense man. The guy shot him. He ended up shooting him. The other kids took off running, this and that, and, uh, and the guy that he shot laid there until the ambulance came. And here, all these children' lives and changed. It was during the Thanksgiving holidays, just joy ride, just doing. And what are we saying here? Life is happening. You got to prepare for the incidentals. The breakfast of champions, covenant keepers. You cannot walk around blindfolded thinking that ain't nothing going to happen to you, nothing going to happen to your kid, nor do you want to look for devils up on the rocks either. You know, when I say be seasoned with your words, the Holy Ghost will bring something to you to let you know that, you know, okay, kind of like Marcus said, you know, I'm trusting you to go into the mall, but don't go in there picking up nothing. And yeah, it may sound a little offensive to them at first because they have no point of reference, but sometimes you have to jog them so that they will be aware to let them know this is sometimes what kids do. They joyride, they do all these kind of things, you know, and I need you to be cautious. This is what pillow talk does in relationships. Doesn't have to be anything wrong. It just needs to be uh, uh, an unction from God that he, you know, maybe in devotional times, we talk about these things and we always want to have a line of open communication uh, to where we can share the, the the rough things that are going on in life. And just in case the enemy tried to get a foothold in, he's on, he, he, he's been peeped out with his game. And the people don't always know if you know something that they're doing or not. And uh, they just, I wanted to somebody tell them something. No, it's just the Holy Ghost. That's why I say we're coming into a, a season of consecration and discernment. I need you to be alert and be aware. What's going on around your house? That's why I tell y'all, don't be bragging about your marriages and stuff because people do people stuff. And it happens to relationships that, uh, that, you, that you don't expect things to happen in because all it takes is uh, something to be going on with somebody in the home and they don't think that one person cares or you're putting too much pressure up on them and folks start checking out just like Rob did here. He starts checking out. Um, if y'all want to make a comment with anything, make sure to raise your hand and uh, I'll deviate here. Um, I'm going to go on with the story here. It says, fortunately, as I mentioned, Sharon loved God. So as people from ancient days until today, she turned to God for prayer. Nothing happened. It says, at least right now, it didn't. Reality didn't shift. The things didn't change. There was no signal, no sign, no voice to heed. 
but Sharon didn't give up on God. He was her only hope, so she kept praying. It says, reflecting on the story Sharon told me, I reminded that all, I'm reminded often God allows us to wrestle, my God, for a long time, period of time, as we reach out for Him. At one of the most painful times in our life, in His life, Jesus prayed three times without any noticeable response from God. It says, it is as if God is helping us to truly own our pleas our wishes and our desires to want them deeply for the heart rather than casually and offhandedly. See, if, if there's a casual something that's going on, it's very easy for you to slip back into your old behavior. Sometimes God has to jilt us with something to bring recognition to a major problem that's going to go. And that's the great thing about having God in your life it's not that we don't go through things just like everybody else does, but God comes in and reveals to us when danger is lurking somewhere. Consecration and discernment is going to help us with that because there are things that are going on in our lives right now that warning came first. And sometimes we're too busy. Uh, sometimes we're in places that we should not be in and we're not keeping the main thing, the main thing. But nevertheless, here we are. We're not invincible to pain. We're not invincible to trouble, you know, but here we are now and we're having to cry out to God. And what happens when God does not answer right, right away? What you're made of will begin to start surfacing. Getting a foundation with God is going to be so important as you navigate through a lot of things in life. It helps you not to give up on school. It helps you not to give up on your family. This is how one person can hold on to the marriage and the other one will let go. It has a lot to do with your foundation with God. And there are times when marriages go through, um, you know, marriages, children go through different things. And to somebody else, they would say, I don't know why you're doing that. I don't know why you're holding on. You know, just like I was telling y'all about the lady, she was making no comments about, girl, you be out there Ubering at night. To, I bump that. I don't need to hear that. I already know the dangers of what goes on out here. I don't need you intensifying. What I need you to do is let me know you're praying. Girl, I got you covered. You know, praying that God will make a way, whatever the case may be. But don't bring fear and all those kind of things in. And sometimes this is what people do. They try to bring you all the negative side. That is that the only conversation you have is the negative sides of things. You know, now I see why God severed our relationship. You're not an asset. You are a liability. You know, that's what Sharon was doing to Rob. She was becoming a liability and Rob didn't see, listen, he didn't see any need for her. And to be honest, uh, to be honest, I believe he may have been the one that was hearing more from God. You're tearing me down. The Bible says, can two walk together except they agree? Every day you're going to tear me down? You don't have anything positive to say. It severs relationships. And believe it or not, this is what happens with counseling sessions too. There are oftentimes sessions are counseled are canceled because there's not a place of agreement. You know, you may think that you could come in there and waste your therapist's time and this and that, but there have been therapists that will that will uh, cease and desist, a uh, seal, whatever the word is. It's like that. That's over. We're, we're, we're not, we're, we're, you're not, somebody's not here. And this is how people check out and the Lord allows us to come to ourselves. You know, yeah, they, they bring in deposits or withdraw. You're not depositing anything. You're not letting me know that you are here. We keep going back through the same things over and over again. See, this is the discernment that I'm using for the new year. I'm not repeating myself a thousand times. I'm not doing that. Either you're going to be intent and me too. I want to be intentional when I come into a place and I want to know that we working together. It's got to be a win-win situation. You came in because you were wanting help. Okay. Now I heard Marcus say this week before last, if you, if you, if you need the therapist, you, you came to me because you need a therapist, but if you had the answers, why did you come to me? This is when we come to God the same way you came to me. You asked for help. Now I want to know, will you sit down long enough to hear the help? 
You know how it is sometimes we feel like, well, God didn't answer or whatever. You didn't sit down long enough. You didn't develop a relationship because he may want to unfold some things before you. It says, it says, uh, Sharon, continue to pray, to search and to listen for an answer. She said within a few days, something began to happen in her heart. It was like a plant, a plant um, uh, seed. Uh, it was like a plant seed sending a tiny shoot out of the ground. Sharon began to feel something inside emotions that had to do with Rob said as she explained it later rather than feeling her usual disappointment and hurt toward her abandoned husband she began to feel his hurt specifically um she I'm sorry uh do, 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 to make sure I didn't miss anything um her hurt oh I'm sorry uh feeling her usual disappointment or hurt toward a ban her abandoning abandoning husband she began to feel his hurt. Specifically, she stopped feeling the pain he caused her and instead, instead felt the pain that she started causing him. She remembered a conversation they'd had that previously uh, she'd seen an example of his failings. Now she recalls things she'd said, statements of blame in which she had made everything his fault. She remembered that Rob had tried to point out her part in the problem but she had simply ignored what he had said to her. Sharon remember one night in particular in a rare vulnerable moment when he was feeling loss of jobs, uh, feeling lots of job stress. Rob had asked her to cuddle with him in the bed for a few moments before they went to sleep. Like a little boy who needed some reassurance, he was asking for comfort to get through a rough spot. She had been so angry at him that she'd say, maybe if you handled your job better, you'd be a man and not need this. Woo, arrows. Then she had rolled over, turned her back to him and gone to sleep. Now with a clear perspective, Sharon could not believe how hurtful she'd been. She felt, uh, she deeply felt the rejection and injury that she caused Rob. Along with that, she felt such remorse and anguish for his hurt. Um, she jolted, uh, the jolt uh, uh, she uh, gotten from Rob, coupled with God's grace and showing her the truth about her reaction, had done their work. That was the answer that she needed. You know, sometimes the answer needs to be to look within. Um, one of the go-tos that 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 I I I do, and, and, and Marcus may be able to add or anybody else, uh, when something lasts too long with me, um, I always go to find out, Lord, am I the problem? Is it something that I'm doing? Okay. And not, not that I'm trying to find, you know, how sometimes you can be very condescending or negative toward yourself or put all blame on you. Uh, when you start developing self-love for yourself, uh, there's a place where you start taking ownership and responsibility for whatever part that you play. You don't come out of any troubles without finding out what it has to do with you. The Bible says to catch you the little foxes that are destroying the vine, because if it's in one place, it may be in another place. You know, uh, sometimes it just may be you're just too busy. You know, you're not in the present moment where you need to be. Um, I, I remember when, when I was married, uh, this was one of my goals. I never, I never knew I was like this. Uh, that's why I know uh, the type of person that I definitely need in my life. Uh, they definitely need to have a place of emotional awareness. Uh, life goes on even when you get married. And I know you I know that. But there were times like when I was uh, feeling my most vulnerable self um, or I was more hurt, uh, I would snuggle with Emmett more. I would always like almost go into fetal position with him. And Emmett would always know something was wrong because she doesn't always do that. But it would always be when I was the most hurt. And it would it would let me know that uh, there was a place of safety that was that I needed in my life. And I always felt like Emmett was very safe toward me. And um, it was just something about it. Um, when I would wake up in the morning time, whatever it was, because I had the security uh, to not be in my mind all night long or whatever, I could come through with some answers with things. I think uh, even with us, um, I thought about how um, 
when my children are the, the these are the people that are closest to me. Uh, when they get into their deepest trouble, they always call. You know, that's that snuggle. They're they're trying to find a place to say you can't fix the problem for them, but it does let you know that they still believe in family. You know, but it's the way that you respond to them when times like that happens will determine whether they'll push away from you or they'll move more towards you. And I do believe the grace of God comes in to answer your prayers about different things. You can't do this alone. I think what God was ridding out of me at that particular time was more and more independence. You know, you're, you've been independent for so long. I didn't ask for that. You know, but this is the card that's been given to you. And sometimes you have to learn how to rid yourself of independence. Uh, Marcus and I are going to be doing our uh, Naomi's Love for those that want to be a part of the courtship program. And one of the things when it comes down to believing for mates in your life, we want we want to prepare you guys in advance uh, for the um, uh, for the reality of what relationship is going to be like, you know. And there's one place you have to let go of your independency. You know, you have to become interdependent, not only with your mate, but with God also. And then to be able to voice uh, without pouring all your troubles off on someone, but to be able to, to voice those things and then wait for God to give you an answer on what to say to them instead of like Sharon says, well, if you were a man, you know, this and that, that, that kind of shoots a person's manhood and they may stay with you for a moment, but they may end up leaving later on because that's a little bit too much of a shot, um, you know, in the heart of, of, of a man that's supposed to be a protector and a provider. And if you're taking away their means for protection by uncovering them or uh, exposing their weaknesses, nine times out of 10, they're not going to stay around for that. You know, so we have to be very mindful of conversations that we have with people because we could be, um, you know, um, that 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 hindrance that's there. And it can also stop us from getting our answers from God. Uh, does anybody have any comments or any thoughts on that um, this morning? Is this ringing a bell to anybody with whoever your loved ones are? You know, I think that this is so true for relationships. Just heard the story. Sometimes we don't realize that what we're saying. Sometimes when we're saying it, we just it just comes out because of what we're feeling. And I, I'm learning how to be more mindful of how I say certain words, despite what I feel. And that's been a a help for me uh, to make sure that um, even if I don't like something, I'm in the wrong position. But now I'm married to the person. I need to find a way to make sure I have the right. Um, way to respond versus just uh, escaping this guy said something in the session just made sense that this is what people do he said you know what I want to leave this marriage because that's what it's easiest to do he told his wife that yesterday and she was wondering why you want to leave this that and other you know I do this that and you know I, it's easiest <laughs> like that's the first true thing you said since you've been here <laughs> That you're running because it's easy to do versus stand and fight. And he just started weeping. You know, it was a breakthrough moment for him, for sure. Now they have to build on it. You know, they have to build on it now. But, yeah, I like that. That's good, Marcus. And, you know, me, I would um, I would go a little further. Um, I would say, where'd you get that from? Where'd you get that running from? Yeah, and we talked about that prior to him admitting it. Yeah, mm hmm Mm -hmm. because sometimes we're modeling what we have seen and and to yeah. be honest what you're doing is you're coming in for a place of healing because one of the first things that people will say sometimes well my dad left you know my father wasn't there or um my mom left or I always felt abandoned you know so that's a familiar place for me and believe it or not uh, Marcus I don't know if you agree with this or not some sometimes people go back to their go-to even if it ain't healthy, you know, I'll just go so back to the default. The yeah, the default. Mm -hmm. His mom and dad died when he was young, so he's raised by grandparents. So he's missed this aspect. He's always blamed God for their early deaths. Mm -hmm. You know, not being able to have them for his lifespan, if you will. And that's been his stuck point. 
Yeah. You know. Yeah, so yeah, we, we talked about it, but he came to realization. Yeah, that's that. That's that trauma. That's it. That's why I say a lot of times we're bumping into people's pain. And, and that's what she said. I love what she said. Is she had to keep pressing for a couple of days. A lot of times we quit. We give up. You know, ain't nothing happening. We tied one time and if stuff don't come back, like we don't hit the, like we pull in the lottery switch or something and we don't realize we're developing covenant, we quit. We give up. But you have to continue to keep doing it over and over again. Have a vision in mind for where you want to go and what you want to do. And it causes you, uh, it, it, we talked about this last night in our in our uh, meeting for our uh, Black Love for Singles, there has to be a buy-in. People have to buy in to your, your, your remorse, your forgiveness. See, that this is, this is what causes relationships to turn around when people buy in and understand that, um, you know, that you didn't mean to do what you were doing. You know, maybe this was your go-to is to run away. I have a little bit more compassion when you come from the depth of your heart to tell me the story than to just walk away and blame it on someone else. That, that's that, that's that uh, fellowship and communication that we're having to have with one another, uh, that we, we, we learn how to talk. You know, uh, running away, that's just something that I do. It seems like it's easier. You know, I don't have to I don't have to stay over here. And, you know, what we say, babysit somebody else's pain, you know, different things like we have all kinds of de defaulted words that we use to um, um, uh, to help us to be OK with the decision that we made. You know, girl, please. You know, we say all kinds of stuff. We want to get rid of those vernaculars that we're using that causes us to go into a defaulted place when you really need to stand there and fight for what it is that you want. Um, anybody else want to share this morning? I saw Anita put something. She said a lot of people are fearful of the unknown. Yes, which causes them to run, which takes us back to the beginning. You know, sometimes it's rejection. They're going to reject me, you know. And sometimes I have to question myself sometimes to ask, um, is there a place of reference for rejection within you? And if it is, let 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 let's deal with that with God, okay? If there's a place for a lack of compassion, okay, let let's deal with it. Cause God will give you a word, you know. He may He may give you that word rejection, or He may give you that word no compassion or whatever. All right, God, I keep hearing that word. Let's go commune with God about whatever it is, afraid of the outcome. Yeah, because things have never worked out well for me. That's because there's a story that's going on in your mind. And we tend to follow things that don't work out for us. And we keep repeating that story over and over again. Uh, anybody else have any other comments that you guys would like to share? Feel free to open your mics. Okay. Not good. Yeah, not good decision makers. That's good, Anita. Yeah, just not good at making decisions. And that that comes from where 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 people don't um 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 you you know how it is sometimes um you're making a decision, somebody's always slapping your hand. Why you do that? You're not walking in confidence, you're not walking in clarity. You know, that that's that post that it says when when a child lives with condemnation uh or criticism, they learn to condemn. You've been sitting around criticism all the time. Sometimes you need to pick up your roots and move them into a more con conducive environment. You know, that's maybe changing positions on your job. Sometimes it calls for change of jobs. Sometimes you have to relocate to get yourself into a new environment to where your thinking can be better. You know, I, I think about when I moved over to Cummins, uh, I was working for this company. And when I tell you they were emotionally unstable in that place, their words were loose, you know, some of the actions and behaviors that they had, it, it just it just was not fitting to my personality. And y'all, I did exactly what Sharon did. I heard of the noise and in my spirit, there was a rumbling. Um, and eventually I cried out to God. I said, Lord, something's not right. And I know I need to stay gainfully employed and I don't know what it is. And let me tell you what God will do. If you stay still, you know, um, if you stay still in a place, um, 
I went to fasting and prayer first. And maybe this is what I should have done before I left the Potter's house too. I went into fasting and prayer first. And I began to talk to God about this next move that needs to be made. And, and um, y'all and I waited. I started my fasting, I think on that Thursday or Friday, I knew I needed to make a decision about some things. And y'all, it come that, it was that, it was right before my son's birthday in April. I never forget, I got a phone call out the clear blue sky from a recruiter that was from East Texas. She was from somewhere close to Tyler. And this lady, she was telling me, she said, hey, Marilyn, I found your resume out on Monster. You know, I want to know if you were still looking for employment. You know, I'm still in this, in this, this Grano state. But I took that, I stepped outside, took that phone call. And I told her, I said, yes, I am. And uh, she said, well, I got this position. I ain't never heard of this company before. I've got this position. I don't know if you've ever heard of Common Sales and Service. She said, if you go down Interstate 20, it's that big old C that stands up that you see. I said, I've seen that before. And she said, they've got a position open there um, as a, a executive assistant. And she said, I noticed that you've been managing multiple leaders. Uh, she said, you don't have to manage multiple leaders. It's only two. I said, yeah, right. She said, I promise you, it's only two people. And so, y'all, I had already made up my mind. I put my resignation in with that place on that Monday. And uh, I had already talked to her. And uh, y'all, the rest of I had trusted God before. You know, Lord, I put this thing in your hand. And sure enough, y'all, I got the phone call. Um, it was about two weeks before I got the interview. I got the interview. We moved with HR. It was supposed to be a, through a staffing agency. They hired me on full time. I didn't have to go through none of that and gave me the salary that I needed. I think I believe that was God doing that. I don't think it was anything else because there are some things that, you know, um, one, God hears what's going on. Remember I told y'all yesterday that the Lord said, be careful what you say and what you do because he's listening to everything. I should have went to God first about that, you know, um, in prayer, you know, instead of making a move on my own. But by that time, you know, it was, it was, it was some emotional distress that was going on. And sometimes that's my reclusive place is to get away from stuff because I, I determined in my mind that nothing will drive me crazy. Nothing will get me out of my emotional state or, you know, how sometimes people on jobs and they uh, doing all that talk back and fighting. And I, I've never done that. And I'm not going to start doing that. And I definitely was not going to respect the place that I love. And I said, God, I don't understand the, I don't understand this, this, what's going on here or what has happened here. Uh, I said, but I choose peace in the midst of the storm. And y'all remember they had another opening for me. And at that particular time, I think it was too much damage that had been done. I didn't want to be anywhere within the ministry. I'm like, no, that's okay. I think I need to go to a place of healing because sometimes you got to go and 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 deal with your own wounds. Um, uh, what has happened, you know, whatever, uh, whatever, you know, whatever the case may be and, um, and, and go from there and take responsibility for it for yourself. Do y'all remember me telling y'all the dream about the uh, monkey, the monkeys, and that dream had a lot to do. That was during the time when I was there. Remember it was this thing called control. Yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with the ministry. So don't, don't get me wrong with that. Sometimes it's people that you sit up under um, I don't sit up under micromanagers. I don't micromanage people. I don't like that style of micromanaging. And uh, and I think out of a good effort, I think they really were trying to make a good effort uh, because I knew that I would be working close to Bishop Jake somewhere. I got his heart. I'm his daughter. And I knew that it was nothing for me to work. And what they did, they had put me like right close to him with the person that I was with. But I had to go through this giant to get to get to a job that need to be done and the putting down and the criticizing it. And no, 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 we don't do that. We we don't, we don't do that. I don't know where you got that from. And I know that's not the spirit of the house. And I'm not going to allow anybody to make me feel like that's what it is. One of the first things that I hear a live mic, uh, one of the first things that I recognize uh, when I got there was that not everybody was of the ministry. Not everybody working there was of the ministry. And I said, Lord, that can cause a problem. 
I know they've got some skill sets or whatever, but that's a lesson that God taught me a long time ago. Don't mix oil and water together. You can cause some real major problems. I know the, I, I understand what you're doing. I understand you're trying to get the smartest people, but you got some Christian people that are that are sharp and savvy. You just need to wait. That's a lesson. And I imagine they still wondering what happened because I didn't give a whole lot of explanation. I don't put blames on anybody else. I didn't give a lot of explanation. I just chose something for me. And I knew that God and I would deal with it on whatever level and uh, move from there. So you take your portion with it, but I will say healing took place with it. Hey, we Let's get that off the dome. We're not doing that. We don't do that to people, you know, and I don't want to ever teach that within my ministry either. Find things that are yoked up with you properly the way you need to. And uh, then remember to go to God. Now, I could have fought that battle. And y'all, but I'm going to tell you something about me. The girl was too young. She was too young. She reminded me of my granddaughter that was managing over me. And I could have caused some casualty with her. She she wasn't ready for that type of fight. That, one thing I did tell them is never put a person that's been in a high level executive position down with somebody that's lower than that. That, that is not a criticism or anything. It's, it's because we think different. We operate different. You cause casualty when you do that, when you put someone, and I understand what they were thinking. Marilyn can help to bring her up to speed. It was possible they were having problems with her, but they didn't say that. Hopefully Marilyn can bring this up to speed, but that's not, that's not the way I have a lot of respect for leadership. And I'm not going to do, I could have caused some real casualty, a real hurt on her by uh, putting her in the presence of God, but I don't think she could handle that. And I said, no, God, I think I'll bow out. I'll let her have this one here. And I'll wait for the next train to come. Sometimes you do have to bow out with some things because you you can really, um, uh, my level of warfare is not to be played with. You know, and I do think about, and sometimes I watch my mouth when I talk to people because I could harm them with my warfare. And you, you sometimes you got to think, you know, before you, act on something because I could have switched gears real quick. Let's do this, God. And when I'm I always say I'm like Rambo, I didn't start nothing, but I'll finish it. And so, you know, know that warrior within yourself. And um, you know, and I'm I'm just giving my raw truth today. Know the warrior within yourself. If you know you're strong even in your marriage, you make sure you know who you're married to. You know, you don't need to be married to somebody that's that's real sensitive about a lot of things. Because when it's time to do warfare, we need to do warfare. And we don't need nobody crying in here about what needs to be done. Because we're protecting the legacy of what's taking place within this relationship. Your ch See, my children, they, they, they got to learn how backbone. In order to be in this family, you're not going to be sitting down crying about everything. You got to have a backbone because y'all are leaders. And leaders have to know how to stand up. I mean, sometimes you got to go through some things for God to teach you how to stand. Amen. I didn't mean to go off on that, but that's sometimes the truth. Um, I'm going to close on this one. The truth can sting, but it sets you free. Sometimes you do need to sing, get a stinger. That's that, 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 that punch in that belly. <clears throat> sometimes you need that in order to wake up. It said this process is in which God gently opened up Sharon's heart went on for some days. He said it was not pleasant. She was constantly facing her lack of ownership of, uh, for her own failures and the neglecting of responsibility toward Rob. She didn't like herself very much during this period of God giving clarity. I call it that spanking that come from God. He got a switch for everybody. It reminded me of a statement in the Bible about the way we sometimes feel toward ourselves when we become aware of our failures. Uh, Ezekiel 36 and 31, he said, then you will remember your evil ways and wicked deeds, and you will loathe yourself for your sins and detestable practices. That's correction. I know it doesn't sound good, but sometimes you got to get a mirror in front of yourself and go through the morning with God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Know when, when to be Rambo and Columbo. That's good, Anita. That's a good one. Uh, still, she kept praying for God's help and strength to bear the truth. Yeah, even, even when God give you that gut-wrenching thing, 
you you got to bear up under the pressure. I'm not going to throw away the towel. I'm not going to run away from it. And well, if that's what you want to do, no, you got to get in there and fight for some things, you know? You you can't use just loose, callous words. There was this gentleman uh, lost a relationship with me doing that. Um, he said, whatever you'd like, you know, and I'm like, that's not that's not conversation. Whatever you like. He just kept repeating that, whatever you'd like. And I'm thinking he has a loss of words. And that's that's not how you engage into relationship. I said, these are things, he's, he's going to be a runner. And he's not going to talk through things. And you got to wage that stuff in advance before you start getting deep with people. It said at the same time, Sharon told me she began feeling something else that was more positive. She was discovering a deeper sense of appreciation and love for Rob. Now that she was uh, sh uh, shouldering her rightful share of the blame for the problem, it was as if there was more room inside of her to see his good parts and those great things she married him for. Sometimes God got to take you back to your why. Why you do what you do must be an effective communicator. Yeah, he'll take you back to your why. And uh, however the Lord does, remember I told you the weapon forms, but it will not prosper when you got a solid foundation with God. They're, hopefully they're married. I think, I think they said it at the beginning. She was rooted in God. She might have lost focus of God, that's why I tell you, don't mess with half saved people because when problems come, they're going to run back to God. <laughs> That's where you'll know when the weed and tear is coming together. God will come in and do the separate. I'm saying all these things as a reminder of hope for all of us that though sometimes it looks like there's not a way and it seems like things are just becoming so grim and foggy around you, just know that God is in there. I told you at the beginning of this call, God is here with us. He knows the troubles that we're going through, but you got to make room for God to come in and sit with you and commune with you and to talk with you about your part, not about the other person's part, but about your part so that you can make some conscious decisions about how to make room to let God come in. Your marriage can be healed. Your family can be turned around. Your finances, man, when I tell you, they can flip upside down real quick on the right side. When you find your part in it, you can't blame nobody else for what God called you to do. Either you did not hear clearly the instructions of what need to be done, or you just bypass it and decide I'm going to do my own thing. You know, this mind, I can, you take an ownership over something that belonged to God. No, our life as a child of God is in his hand. And you have to recognize that you don't get to do things the way that you want to do it. You have to become interdependent. This is what qualifies us for promotions. It qualifies us for relationships. It qualifies us to become the best parents that we can become because we realize that this is an inter interdependent effort that's taking place. No more selfishness, only selflessness. It's not all about me. I have to involve other people in the equation. So closing, things began uh, tying together in her head. God's little messages begin to start making sense. I think that's what Ecclesiastes said. He said, Lord, now make it make sense. Bring all the pieces together. The feedback that I and, the, and a few others of her friends had given, the crisis of Rob's leaving, and now these interval stirrings all seem to be uh, saying the same thing. That's what, that's what we're coming in for Breakfast of Champions is to bring a cohesiveness together. This is where consecration is going to take place. It needs to be a, a cohesiveness. There needs to be a joining of efforts. You know, y'all come into this room. We need to come in as a family, not as an individual unit. Well, I'm just going to come in, just going to sit on the line. No, you come in as a participant, as a partner. So let the Lord know that you are actively involved in this as well. You know, I'm not going to be a tyrant over people. I know it's all kind of ministries out there that, you know, try to usurp authority and do, we're not doing that. I don't, I don't have to, I don't have to move with that hand. That's not who I am. That does not fit me well anyway. It takes me out of character. I want people to freely feel that they have a space to where they can breathe and that they can talk and that you can be corrected, you know, all of these things. So uh, before we leave, I want to leave an opportunity for anybody to share that wants to uh, this morning before we close out.
Has this message made sense to y'all this morning? Are you finding yourself in the story with Sharon? Anybody? How many are finding yourself needing to correct yourself? Anybody that will admit it's me. I need to correct myself. Yeah. I need to make some adjustments. I need to come into a place of consecration. You know, Lord, I, I've been I've been sensing this out of balance for a long time. And uh yeah, need correction. Yeah. Need some adjustments. Yeah, a lot of adjustments. Yeah. Anybody are they the only ones that feel like they need correction in 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 whatever it is that you're going on your job? It ain't the folks on the job. I promise you, it's not the people. It, it may be you that need to make the adjustment. And uh, sometimes we need to give a solid no. No, that's not going to be a good fit for me. That's what I wish I would have done. I would have given a solid no. No, but I didn't have the wisdom to know that um, why the Lord had, you know, put me in certain positions like he did. But now I will give a solid no to people without feeling like I'm hurting anybody's feelings, you know. Um, and sometimes you got to break a system uh, where people are just doing stuff. You know, don't involve me in your chaos. You know, you think through and, and know that when you're when you're dealing with me, that you you're dealing with with holy hands. I'm I'm not that fly by girl that you deal with. You know, you you need to take precaution because it's gonna be some collateral damage somewhere in there. Because I'm quite sure my leaving has uh, left some riffled effects as well. Um, you know, but I want to be more cautious with it and speak up about something. I don't have to just take anything that comes my way, you know, uh, thinking that, oh, you know, you know, how sometimes you can even make yourself feel like, oh, they really needed you in that. No, they may have needed you, but you didn't need that. It got to be a win-win situation, you know. So, yes, ma'am, Miss Kathy. Uh, good morning. Um, I, I just wanted to uh, reflect back to what you were saying about the marriages, um, you know, make sure you don't think that your marriage is not um, where somebody can come in and uh, tear up your marriage. You know, I wanted to just kind of reiterate where I, I've never thought that about my marriage, because like you said, you know, you, you give the enemy a foothold of something that, you know, you're thinking about. And then, you know, he comes in, like you said, he, he'll say something about something and then you can um go there you know in your mind and then that'll take you down a spiral you know of thinking negative thoughts about your husband and or mm -hmm. negative thoughts about your relationship and it's not really that it's just that you know you need to communicate better or more or you know open up and say something about you know things that's bothering you in your marriage or whatever and you know talk more because you know like I've, me and Terry have been married a long time but I've never thought that about my marriage because, you know, I've talked to Shirley about it because people always say, oh, y'all been married a long time. Yeah, we've been married a long time, but that don't mean everything's been peachy, you know, hunky-dory all the time, right. you know. That's right. So I, I, I don't want people to think that everything's been hunky-dory. You know, every day ain't been a good day. I say it like that. You know, mm -hmm. but we've been where we are now, we've matured to this spot. You know, we didn't start out here. I know you know that because we got married so young. But even now with our maturity, you know, we still discuss things. And you were talking about like having pillow talk. We pillow talk a lot. You know, if something is bothering him, he talks about it. Something's bothering me, I talk about it. You know, and then like, you know, you were talking about people that uh, walk around in their house and they don't talk and they, you know, going down the hall or in the mm -hmm. same room. We don't do that. We, we've never done that. And, and that's a good thing, I think, because like now we fuss. And if we fuss, maybe 10, 15 minutes, we talk to each other again. You know, it's kind of like it never happened. That doesn't mean that, you know, we don't go back and talk about it, but we just agree to disagree, you know, and then we move on. We might go back and say something about it to resolve the situation. But we don't hold that grudge against one another to where we go like days and, you know, not talking to each other. We we don't do that. And and that's God. I'm going to tell you, that, that don't have nothing to do with 
me, that's just God. He's worked that out in both of us. You know, mm-hmm. we ho- we don't hold that grudge. And I, I thank God for that because that could go wrong in any relationship, not just a marriage, right. just friendship even. You know, your communication is, is very important because your assumptions can take you anywhere. You know, mm-hmm. when you assume things, you know, when people just assume in their own head, you know, the word God says to lean not to your own understanding because it'll take you there, you know. So I just wanted to uh, share that. Thank you this morning. Kathy, I love that. And we, you know, I've always admired uh, the relationship with uh, Kathy and Terry. I I love the way Terry looks at Kathy. I watched them during a, uh, we had a marriage event. This was uh, in our early part of our ministry. And there's a particular picture that I hold on to, especially when I'm praying for uh, Kathy and Terry, um, that uh, Terry had, he just has this look that he has for her that you could tell that it goes deeper than she's my wife. You know, it's that look that she's my friend, you know, and I'm here to protect her. And I do believe when we have a solid foundation uh, with the, with, with things, you, you know, you're more, you're more apt to stay together. That's why I say, make sure your foundation is good because when the storms of life come in, you will be tested on a lot of different areas. And I think you have to have some go-tos to talk about, even in relation to what happens when we don't get along with each other. Let's make it a pact now that we do not go to bed and don't speak to each other. We don't go to bed and not say anything to each other. I don't care how much it hurts. You know, you got to do that in advance. You don't wait until the enemy get a foothold in. And why you go to bed? You didn't speak. You turned your back to me last night. I called y'all ain't had no vision for the relationship. Talk about that in advance. You know, I've learned a lot. Over these last three years of meeting different people, I've learned a lot about myself, my likes, my dislikes, um, you know, how uh, sometimes I'm I'm more easier than I thought I was. And sometimes that's not good when it comes down to relationships. Uh, there are some times that people came in to be friends with you. They, not, they were not meant to be, you know, lovers or anything because there's a deep level when it comes down to somebody that God has joined with you as a union. And I think that uh, Kathy and Terry are definitely an example of that. Miss Ladriva too, she called me yesterday and she was uh, telling me that her husband was listening online with us, you know, with the call and he really enjoyed it. I've always said that they have a very special bond with each other, you know, um, and sometimes that's what you need when you're asking God for your helpmate, your mate, or not your helpmate, but your mate, make sure these people have a bond with God, first of all, and then they know how to bond with you as an individual and vet that thing properly to make sure, because when the, t- when the, when the tables get rough, you will tell, Mrs. Anita, I see your mic is open. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, baby. It's so amazing that, you know, with everything that we spoke of or has been speaking of with the job, I'm going through um, something with my job and I have been off since May. Hmm. And with, um, I was with pay from May until October on admin. And after that, it was supposedly without pay. However, because I have an enormous amount of leave, someone has put my leave in. I thank God for that. But I say this, I say that to say this, our tongue in my company, when I first started, I was always told that they will penalize you for having a voice. Having a voice. Mm -hmm. And... I've never been the type to, as my mother say, to be a doormat. I treat people the way I would want you to treat me because I believe you have to teach people how to treat you. Mm-hmm. Disrespect is not tolerated on any level. Mm-hmm. And But in my early years, because I had that Rambo mentality, mm-hmm. I gave it to you. Not to say that I was not, I, I wasn't raised to, to, I was, I'm a warrior. And I tell you, I'm a Leo, I'm a warrior by nature. And I was not trying to hover over that or anything. If you 
like you said, I don't start nothing, but you better best believe I'm going to finish it. Mm -hmm. And in my younger years, I didn't use the gift of finishing it peacefully. Oh, say that again, Anita. And, and I had to acquire that skill or I had to make that skill surface that God had given me because silence is golden. And I had to bring that skill up to fight quiet. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm doing now. And all of the executive leadership that build this umbrella to force me into retirement, how about God is swinging them down one by one? Mm -hmm. One of the main, and, and this all stems back from situations that happened in my life. And I think I shared them with you when I was down in the Rio area. Some of these people have now moved to the area that I'm in now and they brought that mentality. Mm -hmm. One of them said when she first saw me a few years ago, Anita Bell, you staying out of trouble? I said, well, Donna, you don't bother me. I won't bother you. And she started attacking me, wanting that behavior, that old, see, they still was going on that old behavior, that warrior. You mess with all you have to do is just attack her and she's going to come this way and she's going to come that way. But it's like you said, when you are a child of the king, you will go back to your daddy for correction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I had had the humble spirit instead of trying to show the devil, you don't know who you messing with. <laughs> you know, and that's the mentality that I had. Instead of allowing God to fight the battle, I had to put my hands in it. Oh, I won. But I but what I went through, I didn't have to go through. Come on, Anita. I didn't have to feel the wrath that, mm, Lord, I didn't have to feel the wrath that I felt. I, if I just had to keep my hands out of it, but I had to show them who I was. But I learned from that because I couldn't go through this time what I went through then because it would have killed me. I got it. Because mm. I'm older. I'm 10, 12 years older now. My heart cannot take what it went through back then. So God, I said, I thank you. I thank you for going through what I went through because see what the devil called himself doing to me to bring me down. Baby, the only thing you're doing is making me. You are bringing out of me what I've always had in me, but refuse to let it show. Yeah, I refuse yeah. to use those skills. But I thank God because like I said, I've been out from work since May. And God has allowed me to continue living the life that, that he has built for me. Yeah. And of course, I had to acquire two attorneys that cost me, a, as they say, a pretty penny. But God is going to give that back to me as well. That's right. Mm -hmm. He's going to give it all back because what they have taken from me to try to humiliate me, to taint my name, the devil is a lie. I didn't go back to get my degree for this. Amen. And, but it, it it's making me because the time that I've been off, it's made me go deeper into my soul. For when I go back, I'm a new creature. He has remade me over and over and over for me to go into the depth to where this will never happen again. But see, you're going to win this. Oh, my God. Mm. This will never happen to you again. Because I've raised you up to the point where you got it now. 
after all these years, you know, you see that I'm your warrior. I'm I'm going to fight these battles for you if you give it to me. Keep your hands out of it. That's right. That's right. And that's what I'm doing. I'm quiet and they don't know. I had a meeting with one of the deciding officials uh, back in September. And, and um, the last thing that I told him was one of the executive leaders who decided, who made a decision to put me off from work, had gone to one of the alternate managers and told them, well, Anita will, will, will go back to her office. She'll stay with you for 30 days and then she'll go back to her office. Okay, if you made that decision, why did you put me off the clock? They didn't know I knew that. The next week, she put in for her retirement. Mm, wow. Feel that I knew that. So your decision making, and that's why I tell people, crucial, it's, your decision making can make you or break you. Because it didn't make sense. Why would you tell someone the week before that you're going to put me back in my office and then the next week you put me off the clock? That don't make sense. No, you guys didn't think I knew that. And that's what really made them crumble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because running their mouths, thinking that they have a web and all they doing is digging a ditch. All they was doing was digging a ditch. Amen. Amen. And then they removed my manager out of her position and moved her to another area and said she would never go back because all God doing is making a way for me. He's making he's cleaning the path for me to go back to my office on a clean slate. I said, Lord, and I thank you. All I have to do is just waver in the in what he's building for me. And getting me together in the midst of me making a way for you, daughter, you get yourself totally together. Calm yourself down. Get your head right. When and when someone comes up to you for attack, it's sort of like you said when you was at the potter's house that that young lady was not ready for what you what had. Mm -hmm. and see, my manager wasn't ready for me. She thought she was, but she wasn't. I said, because I'm a child of the king. And when I go to my daddy, oh, it's going to be some, some, some waves will be made. They didn't think that. They didn't know that. They didn't, they, they want to look at me and, and, oh, well, all you have to do is just do this tour and she's going to react. So everything they did to me was for me to act out of character. And I never did. Over two years, they basically just taunted me, just kept picking at me, kept wanting me to act out of character. If they told me to go get on top of the building, I did whatever they told me to do. And they thought that because I, uh, that that it would humi it humiliated me, but with God, I took it. I took it and kept pushing and did it with a grain of salt and a smile and said, "Oh, you just wait, cause my daddy gonna get you." <laughs> I'm gonna stop Anita right there, you know, cause I don't want her to go deep into the emotional part of that thing because that that's what will get us stuck into it. <laughs> Uh, when we get, uh, you know how it is that you get into the, and God is trying to pull us up out of that because he wants to take care of those things for us. And I do believe the quicker we yield our members over to God, we feel the feeling of the environment. We feel it. But I think a lot of times and the Lord wants to leave the details up to him. What you go through privately with God, that is going to be between the two of you. Nobody else has to know the story whatever yes. the case may be. Sometimes God is just strengthening you to let you know who you are in him. There's never a place where you have to prove anything to anybody, nor do we have to um, get out of character. Like Anita said, we don't have to get out of character with things, but when we take a stance for God, you know, the Lord comes in and fights your battle because he said he's perfecting the things that are concerning you. And I think the quicker we yield over uh, to the Lord, uh, the less likely we are to have to fight battles for a long period of time, you know? So that's what he said. The battle does not, that's what Jehoshaphat said. The, ba the battle does not belong to us. That's what the Lord told Jehoshaphat. The battle didn't belong to you. The battle belonged to the Lord. Because nine times out of 10, 
Uh, these are not new things that have come up. You just happen to run into the storm. And, and God may be using this like he did with Sharon as a eye opener, you know, that this is not the first time. And also to bring it about an awareness that when you uh, work in certain arenas, these are some of the things that can happen. But I need to be the God even over those particular situations as well. You know, great, great. Uh, and I love to hear your testimonies, Anita. I know that's been a been in an area that you've been in for a while. And uh, and I love the way your stance is, you know, the way that you have just been reared, you know, not to just settle for anything in life, but to um, allow the Lord to come in and reveal to you his hand. I love what you said. Also, sometimes we're in that place where I can show you better than I can tell you. Watch those words that you say as well, because sometimes that can be a form of arrogance. That can be a form of pride. And that's a that's a place where do we defend ourselves. You ain't got to defend yourself. You can let the Lord, listen, let him go on and fight that battle. And they'll see later on, they'll see and you'll see too that the Lord is for me. Because that's the bottom line. Uh, the bottom line comes in to say that the Lord, what when the Lord is for you, who can be against you, you know? And sometimes it's just the, the yielding over. But I will say to you, um, you know, make sure you choose your battles wisely. Uh, sometimes there are certain arenas that we get into that a fight is already going on. You know, you want to have proper discernment before you give a yes uh, to those things. And even whether you want to go back to it, sometimes it may be where the Lord says, I'm going to pay you your severance, but I'm going to bring you up out of that too. You know, because you may go right back into the same fight all over again. I say to you, open up your mind for what God wants to do, because God can turn whatever that was that the enemy was trying to make as harmful. He could use it as a place where you get seed to do what he wants you to do. So open up your hearts to receive. Amen. Well, we will be back tomorrow. Those of you that came in just a little bit later, I'm going to continue on seven days a week uh, during the month of January because we're pushing through some things. And also we're moving into a place of consecration that we can receive all that God has for us. I don't want, listen, I want it all back. <laughs> I need to get understanding. I need clarity. I need wisdom. I need to be able to step up and, you know, become a participant in what God wants me to do. I want to heal completely. I don't want to be like the lepers that just went and showed themselves to the priest. I want to be the one that came back to tell the Lord, thank you, you know, because it was worth it all. You know, I thank you for the people that you sent into my life. I, I thank you for the storms that came. And see, that's when you know you're a warrior. I thank you for the storm. I thank you for the good because all of it is going to work together for my good. And then also I'm going to teach the young girls how to walk in their purpose with God. You know, don't listen. You don't have to be a doormat to anybody, but keep your femininity, but also walk as Lydia did. You know, uh, she's she 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 knows that she is a a a maker of 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 whatever God gave her an assignment for, and uh, walk in that without trying to explain. You ain't got to explain nobody nothing that God is doing in your life. Amen. Well, listen, we are doing some. I'm just following the leading of God. I'm not doing anything on my own. We are, we sow every Friday within this ministry, but this is the beginning of the year and we're sowing big because God, I need something big from you. I don't want just uh, pieces of things. I need the full effect of what you're trying to do in my life. And I want to consecrate this seed with you. We're doing a hundred dollar seed for those of you that can do. Y'all know I don't hardly ever ask for things like that, but I just want to follow what God has given to me. I'm going to put that seed down as a place of consecration for this new year to say, you know what, God, I think I may have been some of the problem in the middle of this thing. And in order for me to get this thing to turn around, I need to come into a place of agreement with you. And we're moving off of the scripture, first, first Peter 1, 15 through 16. He says, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. You know, because it is written, be holy as I am holy. You want to do what it is that God does. I don't have to be prideful. I don't have to be boisterous. I don't have to be any of that. I don't have to prove myself to anybody at any time. I'm going to let the Lord fight these battles that's going on. Your marriage, whatever the situation may be, those children. See this thing I got going on with the family? Uh, the Lord revealed to me yesterday, you can't fight that on your own. You're going to have to put the Lord in front of you. You know, um, y'all, I went ahead even for New Year's and put seeds on the ground. Lord, because I've seen you do it before. 
And I want to teach the people that I sit around how to sow. Sometimes you got to sow your way out of a thing and uh, let the Lord come in and do his work. I know it's a sacrificial seed. I know that it is. But even with the sacrifices, you need to put a title on that thing. What it is that you are needing God to do in your life. I, I want to fight this battle by myself. You know, Lord, and somewhere you have, may have dropped the ball. Maybe you didn't do like Sharon did to finally go back to God and then even to hear from God. That thing causes for humility. You have to learn how to humble yourself upon the mighty hand of God. It can't be about you. Well, I'm not doing all that. That's that natural man talking a lot, talking about what you ain't going to do and what I ain't going to say. Sometimes you do need to humble yourself, you know? You need to come to a place where you consecrate yourself before the Lord and let the Lord begin to start leading you. So we are sowing. For those of you that don't have a hundred dollar seed, let's get the best seed. Don't, don't, don't just listen. Don't just say that, you know what? I'm just going to put some on the ground. I, I, I need to get my best seed on the ground. Cause I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all better hear me. Well, you need some protection over your home from this death angel. You know, you do not need to be, burying folks in 2024. But if you don't get a cloud of protection around you, do you know that the devil is running around doing anything, anything that you will, anything that you will open up your mouth and, and be a gatekeeper for? He is destroying people on jobs. He's coming in and he's uh, intercepting relationships. Sometimes you may have to stand in proxy for people. That's what I'm, I'm standing in proxy for my spouse. Every seed that I sow, it's for us. It's not just for me. I already see it coming to pass. I need God to do a work in both of our lives so that we both will be prepared and we will be prepared for family. We're not coming in to destroy one another's families or anything like that. We're coming in to make sure that we are walking in one on one accord with the God that we serve. It's no longer us saying that I'm a believer, but I'm doing whatever I want to do. No, we're going to walk in obedience to what God is saying. So we are sowing this morning. We'll be back again on tomorrow as well, but we're going to get those seeds on the ground just to let the Lord know, God, I trust you. I trust you with this process because I don't know about y'all, mine is too big. It, it, it's just too big. It overwhelms me. It gets in the way. I'm trying to get ready to start on a new job. I do not need any distractions. You know, wondering, I got to take this phone call, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and then I got to worry about the laws and all that kind of stuff. I'm not, I'm, I'm not ignorant to the devices of the enemy. I'm putting it, putting him back in play. I'm putting God where he needs to be. And then making sure that I walk accordingly to what God says and get them seeds on the ground. I'm not asking y'all to do nothing that I'm not doing myself, but it's a, it's called a sacrifice for a reason. Sometimes we have to do what we, you know what, God, that's a stretch, but you need a stretch in your life. That's the stuff that you're going through. That thing that got you quiet and choked up and you can't trust nobody. Listen, the Bible says, whatever you do, whether it be in word or in deed, you do it as unto the Lord. Meaning if there is some repercussion that comes behind, they got to go through God. And you ain't got to tell them that they're going to have to go through God to do that. God is my protector. He is my provider. And I just believe that the ways of God will stand. Those of you that want to sow, there is a link that's already been placed in the, in the chat box. Whether you want to go to the website, whether you want to use the cash app, or if you want to use Zelle. Either one of those. Matter of fact, why don't y'all grab that copy, uh, put it into your maybe notes or whatever. So every time we come in and you're ready to sow or whenever you hear a word that lines up with you, get your seed on the ground. You don't have to wait on somebody to do it. The Bible says you give as you have purposed in your heart to give. And you don't want to come into the room and you purpose in your heart not to do it because that's what shows up. You didn't purpose to do anything, but when you want God to be on that, on that, you know, in that place with you, I'm always asking the Lord, Lord, what shall I render unto you? I already give you my time. You know, I'm already standing in the gap there. Do, do I have anything tangible that I can give to you? What, what, what is it that you're needing? And the Lord will put something in my heart. I don't wait on, I don't wait on somebody to ask for something. I let the Lord put it in my heart. That's why he said you give as you are purposed in your heart to give. Amen. And see, those are the things that are going to connect you to the ministry and also connect you to the promises of God as well. Amen.
All right. Well, uh, for those that are sewing, I want to thank you guys for uh, moving forward with that. Uh, don't think hard about it. Just just obey God. That, that's all you got to do. Because sometimes the enemy will come in to trick you and tell you this and that. Don't just just do what God tells you to do. Leave the results up to him. I got a bill I need to pay or whatever. Sometimes you didn't have enough. No way. That's a seed for a need that you have. So let's, let's make sure we do that. But let's go ahead and dismiss this morning. I want to say thank you to everyone. I see those seeds coming in, y'all. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that God is doing, all the promises that he has made. I want to tell you the promises of God, they are yay and they are amen. I don't know about y'all, but I'm reaping the harvest of even whatever may have been going on in times. Y'all, the joy that's in my heart is that God said he was going to do it and I'm trusting him to do it and to do it his way. It ain't going to be my way. It won't be by might, nor will it be by power, but it's going to be by the Spirit of God. Amen. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the message today. You said, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power in the glory forever and ever. So, Father, we, we cast this bread out before you. And you told us that many days since it's going to come back to us. Whatever way we need to come back, we may need it through understanding. We may need it through financial breakthrough. We may need it through just a settlement in our heart. We may need you to be a lawyer and a doctor in whatever room that you need to be in. But the seed is out there. God, sometimes there's a need that we got that I can't do nothing but put a seed down on the ground. I pray, Lord God, that you would accept our offerings that we are giving on today. Father, because it's coming from the depth of our heart. We know you to be a big God, so we give big. We don't look at you as being a little old bitty God, so I just give you the pieces. Lord, we give you the big enough God. We give you that big enough seed because you are big enough God. You've been making a way for us ever since we've been studying this chapter here. Lord, this, this, this assignment. And Father, we just want to know, first of all, we just want to ask you for forgiveness. God, we haven't always done what we should do. We haven't always followed your way. You told us to go right, we went left. You told us to apologize, we sat upon it. You told us to call somebody and we just acted like we didn't hear anything you said. Forgive us, God, first of all, for our trespasses. We trespass against you like they're our homeboy. Like that we, we they just some other, you know, Negro on the street. But Father, you are our Lord. You are our master. You are our God. You are our keeper. And we put you back in position where you belong. So, Father, forgive us for our wrongdoing, whatever that may be. And I pray that even as the day goes by, that you will continue to keep reminding us of your promise that you will always be there for us. No matter what comes up against us, you will always be the anchor in our life. So, Father, I pray that you would accept these offerings that are coming for, for you, you know, and to do whatever you want to do with them to use them in whatever way you want to use them. But more than anything, God, we want you to get the glory out of our lives from the obedient. And we say that what we have doesn't belong to us anyway. It belongs to you. So, Father, the little bit that we give, make it much, Lord God. Stretch it. Stretch it the word to go get them kids. Bring them kids back into alignment. We take it into those courtrooms, Lord God. We need favor in those places. Father, we need you to be on the decision boards when we're make, when they're making decisions about whether we will be the one to join the, join the team. Not only do we want to join a good team, we need them to be, we need to be a good team as well. So Father, do all your magic behind the scene and do it again for us, Lord God. We're more prepared and more ready because this downtime that you've given to us, we've had time to look at ourselves and think about some things. And if we haven't, Father, this day, we want to sit back and ask you, Lord, is it me? Is it something that I need to do? So, Father, I thank you already. Thank you for everyone that has sown already, Lord God. You know exactly what they're standing in need of. Father, their situation is bigger than them. Some of them are sowing toward their churches. Some of them are sowing toward their dreams. Some of them are sowing toward a, a something that they need. Can't nobody break that back off of but you. Some of them are sowing toward their marriages, Lord God. Some people are sowing toward their mind. Some of them are sowing toward just a fresh start in life. It's a new beginning of the year. And some of them are sowing toward clarity. So, Father, whatever it may be, I just pray, Lord God, that you would meet them at the point of their need. Bring them back in tomorrow morning, those that would like to come in, and let's continue this story. We walk by faith. 
and not by sight. We're catching up, Lord God. We're consecrating ourselves and we're going to walk in more of a place of a discernment. So, Father, we'll see you back again here in this place right here. Until then, the blessings of the Lord be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Remember, I will be back here Saturday and Sunday. We'll be here seven days a week throughout the month of January so that we can get this place of consecration here. Feel free to join in with us. You don't have to invite others to be in with us. But if you just need that press, come on in and in the room in Jesus name.